that seems to be fine. Cool. Um, so, okay, so I'll try and explain the problem again. So, uh, whenever you say something to grandma, she's supposed to respond with, huh, speak up, um, unless you type in all capitals. If you do, she'll respond with, no, not since 1938. And so it'll just keep repeating that over and over until um, you shout bye in all the caps. So, um, so first, that just gonna write out some uh, initial steps that I want to do, uh, just in comments. Not no no code just yet. So, um, in every iteration of the program, right? I want to take in uh, my input. Um, have uh, have grandma respond to the input and then uh, if input I guess that's kind of like a step within that so if the input uh, is by then you can quit um, if lowercase input, then um, uh, speak up. Or if um, uppercase, not since 1930 something. Cool, so that's kind of the general flow within each loop. Um, I'm trying to think if I want to pull this out to a function because that adds like an extra step we might have to do. So let's not do that. So cool. Let's start with the first thing then. Let's take an input. Um, so let's just say input. It, oh, can I make a variable the same name as the input function? Um, I so guess not. You would assign the input to a var variable. My and input. Now saying if I use the the variable input, that's a keyword or yeah, I was overriding that, so I can't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> um, so let's say for the first time we first started the game, let's go. Let's have uh, Grandma say, uh, "Hey, darling, how you doing?" Maybe. I don't know how grandmas talk in English, at least. I only <laughs> have a Chinese speaking grandma. So. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you have some input, and now I want to do all of these steps um, every time. So now that I have my input, so we have two types of loops, right? We have a for loop and a while loop. And the way that usually you decide which one to use, Python's a bit different, but Generally, you use four loops if you know exactly how many times you want to do something, whereas while loops are, you know, you keep going until a certain condition gets met. So in this case, um, the while loop seems to be what we want more because we're just wanting to keep going over and over until we say bye. So um, let's see how to write a while loop in Python. While my input uh, is not uppercase by, maybe that should be that should be right. And so let's not have yeah. grandma do anything yet. Let's just keep asking for input until we say bye, and then the program should quit. And so. So while it's not by, then we'll just ask for input again. Um, um, we'll just do the default thing that they put over there. So so let's run that and see what happens. I uh, probably should have put a new line after these, huh? Something like that. think that's how that works yeah so if I type something it'll just keep 
telling me to speak up until I type. Can I clear this? Oh, that just kills the program. Cool, that's fun. <laughs> so until I type by then, cool. That should that should do it. So let's start putting in these cases here. Um, so we already kind of took care of inf input is by, then we quit. So otherwise, now we want to do this before we take in the next input. Um, so in so how do we check if the thing that we typed is lowercase or uppercase? In Python, you have is lower, I believe, as a function. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, of strings. Mm -hmm. And your input should be a string. So. so if my input is lower, like that? Uh, yeah, all lowercase, I believe. Actually, Python would probably be that instead, but. I don't think it is. Oh. I know, it, it seems like it should be. Yeah, Python does snake case. Like, oh, wow, it is. Yeah. That's kind of dumb. I think it's just how it started. <laughs> and they just keep going. <laughs> yeah, I guess they don't want to break backwards compatibility. So, so, okay. Um, yeah. So if it's lower, then we want a grandma to say this thing. So I guess what I'm going to do here is not have uh, the input ask for that, because that might be a bit weird for logic from what I can tell for now. So I'm going to put this here. Um, what's the Python thing? Print. Oops. So if it's lower, so if all my input is lowercase, it should say this, and then it'll go back to asking again. Um, I think print puts a new line after, so I don't have to do slash n, I guess. I think by default, yes. Yeah. And if not, you could put a inside print, you could do comma sep equals, and then you can show what your separator. Right. So then let's do the other case. So else we want to print and now I'm lazy to type, so I'm just gonna do that. Copy this over. Cool. So we start the program, we get an input, so if it wasn't by. Yeah, looks good to me. Let's try running it and see what happens. Oh, else, because I didn't have a colon on else. Um, um <clears throat> I think you may have to do the inverse logic because if your uh, input has lowercase and uppercase, mm -hmm. it will um so like that. It will say false. Ah, I see. So if any of them is yeah uppercase, that's false. So, yeah. So cool. So, so let's reverse that then. Yeah. Is upper. Then we want to yep. do that. Otherwise, we do that. Try that. So, hi, hi, or a big hi. And if I say, okay, bye, I don't want to talk to grandma anymore, she's going to keep me there until I shout bye. Cool. So, that's the basic control flow logic for this. Um, since we're already here, let's do that random number between 1930. Kind of thing, so we can to make a random choice. We can uh, import the random module, and we can say year is. We can use the function choice from the random module, and that can take in a range from 1930 to. I'm gonna go 1950, so we have to put 1951 because the range is exclusive at the end for some yeah. reason or another. Um, I assume it's kind of like because for loops, you have to do like zero up to the number you want, but not to that number because of array indexes. I don't know. 
Anyway, so then instead of years, now we can use an F string to replace this. Does that look right? Um, yes. Um, you don't do, you just do brackets. Brackets, just like that? Yep. Put year. Does it have to be double quotes for F strings? Maybe, we'll see. Um, if I put I don't it uppercase. So. Not since 1938. Well, if I type in something else. Not since 1946, 1940. Range seems to be right. I went to 1950, but not over. So, yay. We did it. Nice. And then there's that second part that's like, you have to shout by three times in a row and that's probably too much work than I want to do right now. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Any questions on that? I guess Clifford can't see it yet. So I yeah. can send you the link to the code right now before. Okay. Anything else? Uh, if you pull that up, you can take a look at the code and assume I, assuming I made it shareable. Uh, is this the same link? That's the same link, cool, we're good. Does that work for you? Uh, well, I was able to pull now you said you sent me if something from Repellent, right? And I was supposed yeah. to be able to. Well, okay, hold on, run. Let me speak some. So if you type anything in lowercase, it should just say the same thing over and over. Okay. Uh. All right. Yeah. So just to comment on this thing, um, I don't think. Uh, most languages have this thing, so what you would probably do is you take your input, you make it to uppercase, and then you check if or what the logic be. Um, if you didn't have that function, right? I, th I think you would need Remember. to create a function that would go through every single character, and as soon as it encountered oh, a that, lower that works character, too. yeah. It's really low level, but <laughs> yeah, I was doing. I was trying to think of something like uh, if you so you you make an uppercase copy of the string regardless mm -hmm. of what it is, and if the input is equal to its uppercase equivalent, then it's all caps. Yeah, you could do that. Too, I think, but yeah, either way, I assume. Checking character by character is faster Maybe. because you're not doing string transformations and making a new string and then doing comparison because then that's just doing character by character check anyway. Right. Okay. Also, I was going to also add one other thing because I. After the discussion, I don't think I missed a couple parts out mm. as to where, like in the game, it was to where after it multiplies the random, uh, the random ge uh, number generator times whatever I would initially pick out of the, the set amount mm -hmm. that I get, like I would give myself an option, or you would, I'd gave the option of either, hey, do you want to, from whatever that, those two, whatever the sum of whatever that uh, multiplication was, do you want to play the game again or add it back to the original principle? Mm -hmm. And on that, now, I, I'm assuming I would just do an if and then an else if type um, of situation. Yeah. So in this case, in this case here, the uh, the exit case is kind of already built in, so it always assumes you want to go again until you type by in uppercase. If 
So if for yours, um, you had like more things that you could type, like more of a menu sort of thing, like you could choose, from, you know, three different entries, um, then yeah, you might have to do some kind of uh, if else chain or like a switch statement if you had like multiple choices. Um, okay, I was about to say, I'm about to look at look at that because I don't remember ever, or at least I remember switch statements in C sharp. I don't really hmm. remember in Python though. But I'm I about to go back. At the book. It doesn't have one. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, okay. never mind. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't have a built-in switch statement, but you can achieve something similar with just a bunch of um, if uh, statements. Right. Okay, that's what I was thinking. All right. I guess it's because Python doesn't have curly braces, and so like the appeal of, <laughs> of switch statements is like half gone already. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, let's see if we can like make a game that does something like that. Uh, let's create a new Python. Rusty kind efficiency. That's my kind of efficiency. Don't put the band name. <laughs> um. So let's do something again. Let's read in my input. Um. So before that, let's make some kind of menu with three choices. So. Have to do that. Um, so one. So this is a game that keeps a running total of a number, and you can either add to it or um, multiply. You can subtract, or you can quit. It's a very pointless game. I don't know what the point of this is, but it's like a mini calculator. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> cool. So. So at the start of the game, uh, let's print. Um, so let's have a global variable here of uh, your total, and we'll start off at zero. Uh and no. Am I colon? Oh, uh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> print. So we're going to print the menus and say, uh, uh, what do you want to do? Um, your total is a total. And we'll bring that in here. Make that an F string and we'll pass in total to the menu every time. Uh, cool, let's see what that does. I'll type in something and it won't care and it'll just end. Your total is zero, it's kind of hidden there, but cool. Uh, so let's see, so we can just do while true in this case because we want it to actually we could just say if input is four kind of thing um but just for uh you know practice purposes let's do a infinite loop so if uh no so we want parsed input equals uh how do you make it a number like that Int. Mm -hmm. And I assume if it's not numerical, it'll error out, but we are perfect and we'll never type the wrong thing ever. Um, um, so yeah. What are you going to add? We're adding, we're doing these operations to the total. And so okay, it's just, but, yeah. What? Uh, I think, wouldn't you need two things like, like the operation and then the, the number that you're going to operate with? Right. So that's what I'm, going to do here. So if your parsed input uh, is one, so then we'll take in the 
number to add is oh, okay. um, how much to add. And then we can make this a new line here. Can I cast it to int on the same line? Yes. It's kind of messy, but oh well. So number to add takes in that number, and then we can do total plus equal. Does plus equals exist in here? Yeah. It does. It's equals number to add. Nice. And then uh, we'll print menu with the total again. So that should just work with one thing. So uh, I want to add, I want to add 234. Your total is 234. I want to add again. I want to add one. Now it's 235. And oh, let's see how much to add one. And one again, yeah. I think it's your parsed input. I think, I think yeah. Well, I, yeah. oh, I didn't read in another parsed input. That's why. Yeah. I need to do this again. Okay, okay now I can see it. Oh, nice. I hear two of you, but that's okay. Oh, because I'm on the uh, well, other <laughs> on my computer. How about that? Can you hear one person now? I'm not sure, but it's okay. Okay, All right. Um, yeah. Did you catch what I was trying to do with this game? <laughs> let's let's write out some comments because that's probably a good thing to do anyway. So, game that keeps track of a running total. Uh, player can choose to add multiply or subtract from total until they choose quit. I think that's a good summary of what this thing does. Yeah. It should be a bit more uh, similar to what your game is doing, Clifford, because it's reading two sets of inputs. Um, one for like their choice and something for what they want to do. It's not exactly what you're trying to do, but um, there's two different inputs going on in here. Yeah. So now that we fixed that, let's try it again. So I want to add, I want to add one, two, three. I want to add, I want to add two, three, four, and that looks fine. Cool. So then we can add our other cases. is two, and we can basically do the same thing, but with multiply. Number two, multiply. So I could have sworn that REPLIT does code. Ah, that's why. Huh. That'll be. So we want to start equals, uh, oh yeah, that's so much better. Well, Chris, you're going to end up with a problem because total right now is zero. Right. But that's okay, I guess. It's oh, you zero multiply by zero. That's fine. Yeah, it should be allowed. And then let's just do the exit case. So if parsed input is four, then we can break out of the loop. I assume break is a thing. Uh, yes, I think it is. So we're running an infinite loop, and then if it's four, we'll break out of it. I could have also easily just made if my while my input is not four. Um, that would be the exact same thing as well. Mm. So let's try that. So let's add one. Now I can, mm, I didn't change the prompt, but this should be multiplying. So if I multiply by two, that'll be two. Multiply again by two, that's four. Cool. I guess it might make it more. Um... No, I think that's fine. It's just a little confusing between the operands and the and the inputs. But yeah, because they're numbers. But <laughs> that's fine. 
Um, and we could make that an A B C D as well. Yeah. Or like, or just the, a, um, um, or something. Yeah, we can do something like A for add, M for multiply, S for subtract, and then Q for quit. Yeah. And then so we don't need to parse these inputs anymore. So if it's A, come on, can't complete quotes for me. What's this? Oh. No longer inequality or no, it's still is no, it's just it's not parsed input anymore. Oh. And then that's if Q. Yeah. So now maybe that looks a bit more. Uh, let's make it look nicer with that. There you go. That was kind of bugging me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. So if we want to add, um, we can add one, two, three. If we want to multiply, we can multiply by two and get two, four, six. Yep. Nice. And if we press Q, it'll quit. Looking good. Any questions about this, Wilford? Or how I can modify this to be closer to what you're doing? Uh, no, I'm just uh, in take, uh, taking it in, actually. Yeah. And it's kind of a little, I'm glad you actually showed me this because it's actually it helped me kind of get out of the mode of what I was trying to do, or at least how I pictured at least what mm -hmm. I showed you what it was supposed to look like. So it's actually. A little bit more uh what's the word more uh streamlined compared to just mm -hmm. trying to paste it together yeah. and that type of thing yeah so this kind of like you know while something and then you do the same thing over and over again um that's kind of the pattern that you're looking for here and um i i, I don't um i don't know you could throw all of this into a function, but then you'll have to change this condition um, to whatever that function returns. So I don't know, maybe we can do that. So we can call it uh, one round and we'll take in some input. We'll pass in the input to this function and uh, can't be input, it has to be that. And we can just throw this whole thing into here. Maybe have proper formatting. Uh, oh, and there's no closures. And so I'm going to have to throw in the total too. That's fine. So while true, we just call one round. There's probably a much better name for this, but. We call it loop. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So, so now our, um, okay, so now that we've done this, our main loop only, like, this is the essential part of our program. It's like six lines, uh, if you boil it down. But what we now need to do is, change this um, condition. So the easy way to do this is just to check for my input uh, not, oh, what am I doing? Not equal to Q. And this is complaining because if you do Q, this should quit next time. So this is where the logic gets a bit off. Um, so instead of doing that, let's put that back to true. And what I'm going to do here is return whether, also I don't know if total actually gets updated because it's just getting passed in. I assume it's passed by copy, so that might be a bug we have to fix. Hmm. So. We're going to return true because we want to keep going in this case. We want to return true in this case. And here we want to return false. And so um, 
we can say keep going is equal to that. So if we don't want to keep, if not keep going, is, is that a thing? Okay. Yeah. Um, then we can break out of the loop. God. Okay. Cool. So let's check if that bug I mentioned is there. Does this make sense? What I'm doing here? Yeah, a little bit. Um, on the if true at the bottom, mm -hmm. that that part. Help me. Uh, help me understand why. This is what? Why? Need to, why would you? Yeah. If, so. Well, if, yeah. So before all of this logic, this loop logic was all in here. And so I could just I could have just used this my input stuff to tell what I want. Um, yeah, like I was saying, I guess I could put my input in here. So yeah, let's just try doing that and see if something breaks. I might have just been overthinking it. So if my input was Q, then we can break. Um, I don't. Know. You need hmm? you need the cool one. Ah, dang it. Yeah, let's just see if this works. We can add one, two, three. Yeah, so it keeps saying that it's zero because we're not saying that. So we will have to return our totals at the end. Oh, you know what you could do? Return mm -hmm. a tuple. Yeah, and the, of true or false, yeah. And then the total, yeah. Uh, you would use the parentheses. Yeah. Uh, do that, do that, make this false. You probably don't need this um, on this. Uh, yeah, I'm probably just overthinking it. Oh, and then your total is going to be assigned somewhere. Oh, that's true. All right. Uh, what I thought a tuple was like the two underscores in in it, and then another the the other two underscores, or you know, what I'm talking about but two underscores, like oh uh, yeah yeah like magic that. variables. Okay. Usually reserved for the language. Um, so Chris, where where we have keep going. Do mm -hmm. keep going, comma, and then whatever. Right. So I'm want. saying though that uh -huh. I have to know whether I added or multiplied. So I'm going to have to put another check here. Mm -hmm. So if uh, my input was so, see now I'm duplicating this logic outside again. Mm -hmm. uh, keep going of one. I think. Yeah. 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 That'll work. Did. And so this is where it starts being like, okay, did I really have to do that? Probably not, because now <laughs> I'm duplicating this. And this is getting way more complicated than it really needs to be. Because now we're checking if my input's up here and my input down here. Mm -hmm. Probably don't need these either. That's all right, at least it's good future reference, so I... Yeah. So we add one, two, three. Cool. Now it's one, two, three. If we multiply by two, oh, that's not right. Whoa, that's a big number. Hmm. What is this bug? Oh, oh, I'm multiplying and then returning it again. Oh. So what I want to do is return the number to multiply or add instead of the actual total. Oh no, I'm stupid. We did the. We did the thing up here, so all I have to do is just set total is equal to that. Mm -hmm. uh, keep going of one. There we go. I forgot what we we're doing. Never mind. So we add one, two, three, multiply by oh, by two, and we can quit. Yeah. So I guess we didn't have to do this if. Chris, you could even. Keep it even better uh, in the same line. You could do keep going comma total, and then keep going comma total. And the Here. line thirty-five. 35. Line thirty-five. That way you oh, wouldn't. Oh, I see. You don't have to pull it out. Yeah, and that way you don't have to do like magic indexes. Nice. Or New total. 
Oh. Because we don't want to override the existing total variable, right? I think we do. You want to keep track of that total, because otherwise, then you, uh, I where guess would that's you? The same thing here. Yeah. Oh, okay. That would work. Yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah, I don't know if this is making a new total within the block scope here. Oh. That was that was what I was saying, but would that be like a memory leak or something? Uh. No, I guess it's probably fine in this in this case. But if if this was just one part of our program that keeps track of this total, you know, we had another game that for some reason references this global total, then you know, maybe we don't want to immediately pull whatever new total comes back from this thing. It was like a bank, yeah. right? And it was doing some transactions. You don't want to update the actual total until you've done all of your <laughs> important exactly. checks and yeah, whatever. That makes sense. Oh crap! Right. My bad. I didn't mean to mark that. No, you're fine. But, uh, I was going to ask. So, so on the global total. So on that, what I I could actually interpret that as my initial principal amount. Right. Okay. Okay. I think this more clearly illustrates what's happening, though. Mm -hmm. It's more explicit about what's happening. Yeah. Does this make sense? A bit, at least. No, it does. That's why, especially when you, on this part where when you especially said global mm -hmm. total, that's why I was like, right. oh, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, I, I don't know how Python conventions work. Um, I don't know how we make global stuff. Like, I think there's a global keyword, but that does something else, I think. Like, it if you mark something global at the top, it allows that number or that variable to be global accessed uh, within, within the classes and stuff. And classes and Do I, I think do that so I mark it as global and then I use it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think that does anything in this case, but if I multiply something, it'll be zero because anything zero is zero. Yep. I didn't put so, this in track, but okay. So now here, here's the question then. So if the global amount is really open to whatever you might want it to be, mm -hmm. or or do I need to establish say the global amount is this period? So instead of saying equals zero, you could say equals input and say, you know, enter principal amount. Okay. Does that make sense? No, it does. That's why I was just trying to. Yeah. Because if because that's why at least I thought the uh, two open parentheses were for just to mm -hmm. that you could put in whatever number it could be. Yeah. So let's put this in just to make it a complete thing, and then we can return uh, true, and then you took. Yeah, so we can say here total. Um, instead, we can say input. We want to cast this as an int. Uh, input how uh, okay. enter principal amount. Is that what it was? We could draw something like that. <clears throat> So we can start off with $10,000. And then we can add. Okay, 10, okay, 000. now I'm getting it. And so you were saying something with random choice. Um, so we, can, we could try something like whatever they enter, um, that will get affected by some multiplier some random multiplier. Right. So um, how can I choose a decimal range, Alex? Mm -hmm. Well, at, at least the one I looked at is where I put in, well, I had it as actual cash amount vested times, mm -hmm. the, the time symbol, random dot choice, and then double parentheses, negative 50, comma 50. Nate. Oh, I see. So that's choosing from a tuple between two choices, like uh, Alex was okay. saying last time. 
This but is, I will only choose negative fifty or fifty, right? Not a range. Oh, okay. All right. That okay. That's the other thing I'm getting hung yeah, up on. So if I do that, that's what you want. Yeah. Um. um it'd be fifty one though. How can I make this choose the decimal range, like the uh, not just ints but floats? Uh, I think you can just decimalize them. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Okay. Well, actually, no. Um, you could choose by steps. Let's let's just do it over here. We can just yeah. That's what? the good thing about the REPLs. You can just import random. Do random dot choice range is negative fifty and fifty. Flip yeah. cannot be. Oh, so range only takes an integer. Let's look this up. Python random float range. You do have a an ability to go step by a certain number. Oh, random just does that. That's nice. Oh, so, uh, I guess that's what I want anyway. Yeah. Random dot random. Rand range is another uh, random module function that I, I don't know if it would help us here. Uniform. But. That's what it is. <clears throat> No, you I usually think. want uniform if you want uniform distribution between your floats. Yeah. I think pandas has a lin linear space. Mm -hmm. So you could use lin space and then define what. Generate. Okay. So you would use. No, go, go ahead. Oh, uh, no, I'm just reading this. Go ahead. Okay. So I was about to say, so you would actually use random dot uniform um, and then put these range. I don't know. Let's see what random dot uniform between so if I did negative fifty and fifty. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. So what what was your random thing supposed to do? Or what So was it was supposed to well basically what would what was supposed to happen is that it will multiply whatever the initial amount mm -hmm. that you picked from the from the principal. Take that times the whatever the random number generator was. Okay. So let's say new total is our total times some random number. Okay, and see that's the other thing I was trying to I was getting hung up on because I was trying to figure out is do I need what I have to say, hey, X equals new total and then go about that, but you're saying X is just You'd automatically just uh, create this new uh, subject called new underscore total, right. and since you're actually initially creating whatever it is times. So we can say principal. Total. Well, we don't want to call it principal because then you're referencing principal, and that doesn't really make sense. Well, we can say principal okay. is that. Um, let me give the principal in here just. Just to have that there, and then we can start off with total equals the uh, principal. Chris, the only thing I would mention is that now that things are floats. Yep. Um, That's good. all your. You need to cast everything in a float. I think. Yeah, I can't do int here. But that's not being run anymore, so we're good. We threw oh, away okay. code. That's the best kind of coding. Right. The best code reviews we have is just dozens of lines being deleted and we're like nice <laughs> don't look at that anymore yeah so yeah this is probably something of what you're looking for in yours um, along with this kind of while loop structure if that makes sense this is kind of no, it does place yeah. now, but I don't even know what's what anymore. <laughs> New total is that, and or you can just say total is that because you can just overwrite them too. And at that point, you would just do total star equals that. And so if I run this, this should just keep going for okay, so I really... until I press Q. So it shouldn't matter what I, well, let's start with 10,000. It doesn't matter what I type anymore. It'll just keep multiplying. 
So my balance could go to negative like 38, 387 trillion. Um, right. Might want to rethink <laughs> the logic for that if it's going with money, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I, I, I have, but I was, that was kind of the <laughs> point of the game to where basically like I, and I put in like uh, some quips about if it equals mm -hmm. the same amount that you initially came in with, then, you know, I say this and then if it's more, it's <laughs> that, and if it's less then there'd be the other response. Yeah. I see. So, so yeah. Okay. So, Looking at this, yeah, I was actually pretty far off the mark of what I was writing. So, so I guess this is really what it would be. Just this bit here um, of something that does kind of what you're doing. I, I, I don't know the exact math that you're doing in here, but replace this part with whatever math you're trying to do with the random I could say multiplier is equal to this. And we just say that. And then you can just do, you know, uh, and then if they say Q, then they'll just stop or it should. this kind of um, control flow logic that's really um, like you you know what you want it to do and right just about there but it's just kind of reasoning about how to make this logic the simplest way you can because you can yeah. totally make this you know much more complicated and do the exact same thing. Um, but the nice part is trying to figure out how we make this as not, not only as simple, but as simple to understand you like, I could probably, you know, make this whole thing one line if I tried really hard, but you know, that may be simpler code in a sense, but you know, there's no way anyone's going to be able to read that, which is why when you're on some of those like coding challenge sites and they're like, yeah, look, I can do this algorithm in a single line of, you know, 10 different things. That's less lines of code, but it's way harder to read and understand. I've heard that being classified as fluff code or something like that. Um, it, it, uh, cause the way you were describing it is where was in this, uh, I think it was like a C sharp class. The, the guy was talking about how there was like a lot of, um, what is it? You know, a lot of abbreviations that he did in the code mm -hmm. that you could do, mm -hmm. but it, still didn't make any sense because <laughs> it didn't actually explain what he was doing. Yeah. Um, I think a common term for that is code golfing. You try to keep okay, yeah, yeah, little lines too. and little characters. So instead of multiplier, just put M and, you know, maybe I'll import random as R so that that's shorter. You know, T and, you know, <clears throat> I could make this as very l unlegible Ill illegible, unlegible, yeah, not illegible, legible. <laughs> and you know it'd be much shorter, but it would take much longer to read and understand. And when you're writing code with other people on a team, you know, readability, maintainability is definitely something to prioritize over just raw performance. Like when you're studying, you know, algorithm stuff, they like, oh yeah, you don't 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 use nested for loops because that's slow, you know, that's big O of n squared. But you'll commonly see nested for loops until 
it comes a time where, okay, we're running into performance problems because of this thing. And then that's when you go in <clears throat> and start to find better ways to do it. Otherwise, the simplest approach is usually the best. But yeah. Um, let's see. I'll put some comments in here. And in here. I think it was keep going and new total. And then Yeah, I'll share this, so if you want to look at it afterwards. Okay, yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> this actually helps. It's, it's more of a better way to actually help kind of expand my mind in, in exactly how I'm actually trying to approach this. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, this stuff is mainly just, like, getting used to thinking about this kind of thing in this way and that's just uh just do it a lot of times and it'll be easier eventually <laughs>